want you close Maybe hold your hand a little while Somehow I know You're gonna be the girl that I'll end up calling my own We ride around in style Sleeves rolled up, glasses on And then you make that smile And my heart starts racing When I'm with you Hello YouTube, Steve O'Trucker here and hello everybody as usual welcome to my channel and today we're going to be doing one of my top six type of videos not top five top six today I decided to do six don't ask me why it was going to be five but I came up and what is the top going to be top of well I had to think about this and and it's going to be bad driving slash dangerous driving that as truck drivers tend to either have to put up with, witness or deal with and I'm not saying you'll witness <clears throat> everything like this or any of this order is more severe than the last <clears throat> and it's not in all, I say it's not in order of how important or how less important or you know, all, all the points on this list are probably as equally as important as the last one. So what we'll do, we are currently located in, I've forgotten the name of the services, but the services that's between Newbury and Swindon on the M4, heading northbound. So we're going to go past Swindon, and we're heading up towards Chippenham today. And let's get out of here. So, what is number one? Number one, it's probably quite apt, is being pulled out upon or cut up. You know, more or less the same sort of thing. Uh, very common. It's just part and parcel of people trying to get ahead of the heavy goods vehicle. And what I mean by this is being pulled upon where the truck is having to take emergency action to stop an accident taking place. It happens quite regularly, it's almost, sadly enough, it can be a daily occurrence on occasion. I guess we have days that it doesn't happen, and you know, I only hope it doesn't happen, but sadly enough, you know, it's a fairly regular point. So, I'm not going to pull out on anybody here, just going to let them go by. Mm. Probably going a bit faster than what the seam, or maybe slower. Not worth the risk. Not well on making this point either. <laughs> Only kidding. Yeah, but yeah, being pulled out upon. Very, very, it happens very regularly. And, I, and a lot of people don't realise the danger that they put themselves into when they do this. You know, they've potentially got a 44-ton vehicle. Because they do not know how heavy, if you're loaded, unloaded, even if you're unloaded, it's still a lot of mass to stop. And stopping a truck, even if it's a rigid or a class 1 vehicle, is no mean feat. You know, especially in an emergency. It, it's going to move a fair distance before it comes to a stop, even with the best drive behind the sting wheel. And also you've got the different types of vehicles, depending on loads, a bit like a tanker, this takes forever to stop in emergency. Compared to other. There's probably far worse loads to carry as well. You know, it, there's lots of factors, it's just not worth the risk, it's just far too dangerous. You know? But a lot of the people who pull out on you have no clue. And they're the sort of people pull out in front, the truck doesn't manage to stop, the load gets thrown, they have failed deliveries because of it, the load gets damaged, blah de blah de blah, even the truck could get damaged, you know, through the process. You know, even the driver could get injured through it as well, you know, potentially. There's lots of factors at play there. So that was number one. Not necessarily is the most high quality of bad driving but very common like 
your truck pulling right, or not truck, the bus driver pulling right on this. So he literally put his indicator on when he's right beside us just then. Not cool, not smart. Not giving any braking distance. But that's another point for another video. That isn't even in this one. And really witness another common bit of bad driving there, actually. So, all right, next one is head to head overtakes or dangerous overtakes. You know, ones that double white lines or going head on with oncoming traffic just to get past the truck. Very common. This is why you got to keep a second eye down what's going on beside you on that, especially on A-roads, you know. Or at the end of uh, dual carriage ray sections going back into single carriage ray. That's a very high likelihood as well that people go head on with oncoming. Just to get past you. You see them, they come racing up behind you. You can see the desperacy of getting past you. It's all part and parcel to the same to the last point. That lot of four wheelers, van drivers and all the others just want to get past you. At all costs. You know, irrespective of the danger they put themselves or others into. And completely unaware of the risks that are involved as well. What would take that truck to stop an emergency? What, you know, how close are the margins here? They think, no, oh, the truck will stop like a car, or it's just as nimble as a car. You know, it's not. Far from it. And, uh, yeah, I, I could go on all day long with that point. So, yeah, that's, that's, so. Uh, oh, that's number three. Speeder uppers, slower downers probably an irritating car road user but equally bad driving and dangerous at the same time some people aren't aware some of it's because of lack of concentration lack of awareness of what they're doing some people do it deliberately and some people you know in another way do do it deliberately as well to toy around with heavy goods vehicles and what do I mean by slow up or slow down now? mainly afflicted to motorways and your carriage runs they like to sit in lane one, which is fair enough, and they'll do, say, for example, 40 mile now. We're doing 56. So we go to overtake them. And there's several, I've talked about this before, and other YouTubers have before as well. You go overtake them, this is a typical one, you overtake them, get past them. Then all of a sudden, they go to overtake you, and they go past, and they move back into lane one, and then they start slowing down again, because they just didn't like being taken over by the truck, or they're just playing around with the truck, go, oh, this is fun. You know, this, this is a lot of fun, this is. There's a better truck driver, or bus driver even. Not truck driver, or a similar, but not quite the same. Or you get the other ones that you go to overtake, and then they start speeding up, either meeting your speed, creating that very awkward situation, or just speeding up altogether, just going, do, 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 do. and they could do a multiple different types of things. They could just crack on as they are. And I hate those over speeding warnings. <laughs> They're so distracting. You have to cancel it off on the head. I'll talk about that in another video. But, uh, so if you get slightly over your speed limit, look, we're going down the hill, or, you know, over the limit, I should say. We're not going over the speed limit, per se. It's actually six mile, 60 miles an hour on this road, but we're limited to 56, so we have to grin and bear it. But we can't, obviously, naturally over-exceed it, obviously. But that's another point for another video. So... Yeah, they're just really irritated and can be very dangerous. You know, to put trucks in a very awkward situation, generally, you know. And quite a lot, a lot of the time, the cars are more than capable of doing motorway speeds. Or, you know, and there's a mixture of reasons why you have to be slow up or slow down. There's some of the older drivers, some of them are just people on long journeys who haven't taken a break. You know so on and so forth and they said you do equally have road users who will toy around with heavy goods vehicles thinking oh this is fun you know <laughs> not saying they exactly say that but you know oh this is fun <laughs> that sort of thing yeah but they are irritating and as i said they're equally dangerous 
they are a risk. Number four, brake checkers. Yeah, people like to check your brakes that they work, and yes, they're still about. And it's often because somebody's got a bit excited because you held them up, or you know, there's multitudes. It's basically a form of road rage, really. And yes, people trying to earn the extra bit of money from the insurance if you hit them. Not, I won't say they're as common as they were, but there's still a few about. You still have to watch it. And some of it is people just completely unaware of what they're doing. You know, they just slam on the brakes all the time anyway. And yeah, beggar's belief. We try not to follow anybody closely, but they pull in straight in front of you and slam on the brakes. You know, that's more or less brake checking in truck terms. But I'll leave that there because every boy knows about brake checkers already, how dangerous that is. You know, I don't really need to go any further in how dangerous that is. Um, no, do, do, do. what's the next one? Aha, yes, being merged into by a slip road. So, say for example, we're going down also on the M4 at the moment, we've got a slip road beside us, say for example, we've got traffic beside us, so we could pull over anyway, and even that aside, we don't have to. And we've got loads of traffic on the left trying to go, not necessarily loads, it could be just one car that decides to merge really slowly, and decided to try and merge into you. Putting the truck driver in a very awkward situation, generally we just crack on, you know, we let them panic and sort the situation out themselves, because can you do, you know, I'm not going to swerve out and danger other people, you know, etc, etc. As we are fully loaded at the moment, so she is wanting to cruise down the hill, so that's why we're on the exhaust brake. And the good thing with the cruise mode in this, it does it all automatically. Now I've just broken down the car on the left. Yeah, so being merged into, and it, that does happen a fair bit. People just can't t time the merging, and they're just dangerous because they have. It's like they've never read, read the highway code in their lives, and even if they did, it's more like they call dumped it. I went, mean, yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't abide to me. <laughs> That's what they must think. And yes, that is dangerous. No, there's been many a situation. I've even been beeped at by them given all sorts of gestures. So we can move out, we've got a lot of traffic coming down. I'm going to be a kind, I normally have a policy, I don't try to move out for cars, just because of uh, the prior accident. Here we go, we've got a perfect example, that red car there, bullying him his way onto it, just to take that silver car. What was the point of all that? You know, that perfect example, it happens. That's almost a showing it does happen fairly regularly, that does. And that's why I'm very sketchy about mergers now, especially after the accident I had earlier this year. That car merged in and just decided to sit beside the truck, you know, in their blind spot. I <laughs> to choose everything to sit beside a truck in. But it is what happened and it happened and it happened, so it was all good. But that's why I'm a bit, you know, sketch, not sketchy, but you know. It's probably one of the very few times recently I've given way to cars. Normally if there's a truck there, yeah, I'll go over for them. But generally with cars, I tend to try and let them do their own thing. But when you see a situation you've got loads of cars coming down, you have to make a call. And common sense, I can get over. You know, I'd only give away to one car, jobs are good and, you know just be vigilant. Well, yeah, yeah, as I said, that was a perfect demonstration by that red car at the end of the day. <laughs> I didn't even plan that. Uh, and this brings us up to number six, which uh, is other road users trying to get past with no room to get past you. So down a very narrow country road is a perfect example. You to go down the tight section, you're committed down this tight section already, and a car tries to either 
oncoming car, even a car that's behind you is a bit really impatient. It tries to do an overtake and they can't. And, you know, especially for oncoming traffic mainly, it's mind-boggling. Car drivers have this sort of attitude that we can breathe in. You know, as I've told you in other videos in the past, you know, I've had a few circumstances where I've had discussions with car drivers when I've been committed down like single track narrow sections and they saw me coming and they could have waited in their waiting area but they chose to come down and just cause really awkward situations. Almost like standoffs, you know, with a 44 tonne truck. You know, not funny. <laughs> you know. I had one car saying, oh, I can squeeze down then. He could have. And you end up having to reverse all the way back down anyway. And <laughs> which, you know, I was all like shaking my head at disbelief. You know, it was like, so I told him, just crack on if you can. I'm not moving because I'm as tight up as I can be. I can't move over anymore. Well, you can breathe in, can't you? <laughs> and that just highlights some of the lunacy that four wheelers, as I call them, car. And that's what we should call them as truck drivers, four wheelers. Nothing bad, no, nothing derogatory by that, but you know, generally it's all. A lot of these issues are caused by four wheelers. You know, what I mean by four wheelers is car drivers, van, everything's got four wheels. Tends to be the most big offenders on the road of breaking, you know, being dangerous, bad driving, and stuff like that. The highest proportion. But I would like to add. There is actually a seventh thing on here that probably hovers in what might come up in a few of these. It's probably if there was, in scale order, this would be up there. I mean, if not number one. And that is fellow professionals doing any of the before mentioned or anything else in terms of bad driving. <laughs> Luckily, it's a low proportion compared to everybody else. The vast majority of truck drivers are professional, do what they need to do, and we all have a bad days, we all have misreads of situations. You know, so I'm saying any driver can mess up, but overall, you know, it's a very small group it tends to be. I do want to stereotype but, you know, if you look into it, you work out who the high offenders of it are. I'm not saying that there's no group of heavy goods vehicle drivers that ha don't offend. And yeah, all do to a degree. But not to the same level as other road users do by no means. We're, we're kind of like, you know... But luckily, the vast majority of professional drivers tend to be very good at what they do. They tend to be more aware, more cautious about consequences, what could happen, you know, and take more responsibility, you know, and they'll set their hand up if they make a mess up or, you know, they generally won't make a mess up, you know, in the vast majority of things. So I just want to add that in there, because, you know, there will be one person who might be tempted to comment down below saying, what about truck drivers? They, they do it as well. Yes, there's a very small group that do do it, you know, but you always got bad eggs in any group. But overall, car drivers make a lot of those points very regularly. I mean, weekly. Every week, there'll be probably several of those easily on my list of bad driving I've witnessed or had happened to me. You know, all sorts of stuff. And, uh, you know, as I've been bettering myself, you know, we try to avoid it as best as possible. If I see a situation that could arouse, I try to neutralise it. I'll look ahead. I think, is that car going to pull out in front of me? I'll just prep the brakes a wee bit. We shouldn't be having to do that, but as a professional driver, you've got to start thinking ahead and looking what's going on up ahead you know is joe blogs about to merge into me you know can i do something about it but sometimes just dropping one mile an hour might just save you getting into a massive situation but overall my general ruling is to hold your ground you know don't let other traffic bully you but if you can prevent be the bigger person you know 
it's not about who's the hardest, who's more on the right, because at the end of the day, if you get involved in an accident, it's the consequences you may have to live with then, even if you were in the right. And sadly, as professional drivers, we've got to put up with a lot of bad driving. A lot. You know, it is tiresome at the end of the day. It puts a, a certain mental strain on those drivers. You know, everybody, and if you watch this and you're a truck driver, you probably know what I'm talking about. 100% go, oh, yeah. And it affects people differently. You know, watching, uh, I'm going to murder his name. I do apologise if you do watch this vlog. I don't mean it in any bad way. It's probably how I, I mispronounce stuff. So that's Trucker Deardy. Deardy 2012. It involved his recent vlogs. You know, he had a close call with a car pulling out on him. You know, and he is really shaken up and, you know, apparently he threw the load a wee bit as well. You know what I've heard. And, and that's not cool, but yet that's a fairly common thing that can happen. I mean, that one person who pulls out without looking or thinking, yes, I can get ahead of you before, not realising, you know, you may be doing 50 mile an hour down this road, and, or 40, whatever it may be, you know, doing. And yeah. And I, I felt that was very good of Trucker Deity to bring that out more of his vlogs as to highlight this happened to me the other day. It shook me up, you know. Yes, because you know the consequence. If it went south, you hit that car, whoever's in it, you know, if it's a young family or a mother or whoever, it doesn't matter who it is really, you know, it could be disaster. And that is part of our job, you know, it, and this is why I say trucking isn't necessarily a fully easy job. Yes, in principle, it's an easy job to a degree, but it comes with huge responsibility. You know, huge. You know, you've always got to be the bigger man. You have to be almost a disaster avoider as well. Because trust me, you know, you can get yourself into trouble with all these things before you can know it. And generally, it's not really down to the truck driver's fault. You know, generally, it'd be somebody else has absolute zero clue. You know, they've done it a million times, and I think, oh, this one more time, I'll get away of it. And something happens. You know, this is why some of the really bad accidents do happen, sadly. So, what I do is set our. I'm not over speeding now literally one mile an hour over then, that's how sensitive these taco things are. Try, try not to do the over speeding, but when you go downhill for laden, you're kind of have to be managed for how, how you brake and slow down. Sometimes you have to go slightly over to drag it down, if that makes any sense. Just so you don't overheat brakes and all that. That's one things I do have a pet ache with with the taco system is just how Oi you slow down <laughs> Or I'll mark it up and you could get a fine if you don't do it in 30 seconds <laughs> And it just keeps flashing at you till you have to put cancel it out And that's probably my biggest issue about the warning is that you have to cancel it out on the head instead of self-sensing going Oh you slow down oh stop good happy days <laughs> Oh well, it is what it is. Sorry about that. This is another of my pet hates. <laughs> I'm going to do my pet hates of a taco system video next, probably. <laughs> I've already given away on my biggest one. <laughs> yeah, but... You know, as truck drivers, we have huge responsibility and, you know, we have to avoid disaster quite regularly. It's almost every day occurrence. That there's always something. You know, I had a... Tell another thing that happened today it was in we just come from London, dual carriageway section of London, it's quite a tight one. And had a BMW decided to come base up near all those big SUV ones. Very tight, you know, I was hanging to void on the white line and he panicked out. And he got really complacent with me in terms of he was on his horn, going, you know, I can't budge over, I'm lane one, I'm 
doing 35 in the 40, so I'm being cautious because of uh, I know I'm dominating the lanes. Not much I can do. He's going up behind me. Surely you could see that going, well, actually, this is a big truck. If I'm not comfortable with taking this, and this falls back to, you know, trying to get past when it's too tight. Yet again, you know, think, you know, if we can't weave in, and if we're occupying the full lane, you know, the lane is prob was probably as wide as the truck is. That's how tight it was. That's before you go onto the pavement wall, the furniture and all that. So, yeah, it was pretty tight. That's why I was going through a little bit slower. Not hugely slower, but enough to be, you know, to react to any danger. And yeah, we have to deal with situations like that where people misread and then get angry because they've put themselves into a situation thinking you can press a magic button and disappear or fold in more or you know <laughs> but yeah it is what it is at the end of the day I would like to I'd love to hear you know if you've witnessed similar sort of things as well well driving or had it happened to you and most likely if you've been out on the road you probably have had all that happen to you or seen it happen to other road users no doubt but if you have any other points to add Add to it feel free you know and hopefully you've enjoyed this video yeah you know, tell me if you like my, my top five videos I'll try and do some more pos do some positive ones but as he always says it's easy to do the heart the, the ones that you're a bit negative on but I thought it'd be entertaining in a way just to go through from a trucker's point of view this is just my point of view it's not saying you know out of the book or out of statistics this is out my opinion of what I witnessed and there's always other stuff as well that goes on. There was other bad road behaviours that you see. But yet again, hopefully you've enjoyed this. I'd like to say a massive thank you to all my uh, subscribers. And uh, to everybody who's wa watching my channel. It's seriously appreciated. Please smash that big subscribe button if you haven't already. And hopefully I'll put my big ding click you know thing up on here i'm looking at getting a slightly better version done or make one up i'm just using a freebie one at the moment which is doing a job but let's um go put my own personal one on so hopefully that will come relatively soon i just need to study more on how to do it um anything else to add i mean there's nothing major to, to announce as such but yet again i would like, like to say just a massive thank you to everybody to seriously appreciate it also smash that bell icon as well to remind you when i uh, post and you know hit the thumbs up or thumbs down if you disliked it or liked it hit that as well it helps the channel out immensely if you do that and check out my social media so that's mainly facebook and instagram i'm on mainly in between so go and check out those two bits of social media and hopefully i'll see you next time over Please.